This believing man was so sincere to his people. He really cared for them. How do we know? He called his people to Islam, even though they're about to kill him. Ya Qawmi, he called them as his own, as his own community. Ya Qawmi, my people. When he died, he's still thinking about his people. Ya Layta Qawmi Ya'lamun, I wish my people knew. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says about this man, this was a man who was sincere to his people, dead and alive. When he was alive, he was sincere to them. He begged them, he, he uh, tried to persuade them, and when he died as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran about a very interesting story in which there was an unnamed believer and three messengers, all for one specific scenario and situation. This is mentioned in Surah Yasin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us uh, basically about the story as it starts off. وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا أَصْحَابَ الْقَرْيَةِ إِذْ جَاءَهَا الْمُرْسَلُونَ Basically, the messengers came to this town. إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ وَثْنَيْنِ فَكَذَّبُهُمْ They had two messengers sent to them, and they rejected them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَعَزَّزْنَا بِثَالِثِ Sent them a third messenger to reinforce them too, and to reinforce the message. فَقَالُوا إِنَّا إِلَيْكُمْ مُرْسَلُونَ They said, we are messengers too. Now, what did the people do? They rejected. They said, you are human beings like us. And eventually they got so angry at these two messengers, they started threatening them. That we're going to hurt you, we're going to kill you, you're bad omens to us, you're a bad thing for us. They started threatening them with their lives. What were these three messengers doing? They were calling people to their salvation, to their success, to their own happiness. They weren't asking for anything personal. They weren't asking for any kind of payment. They were asking, or they were calling them to guidance. They were calling them towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. What happens? In the midst of this tension, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about an unnamed individual, the believing man from the story of Surah Yasin. وَجَاءَ مِنْ أَقْصَى الْمَدِينَةِ رَجُلٌ يَسْعَى قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اتَّبِعُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ A man came from where? From the far part of the city, the far part of the town, the end of the town. يَسْعَى He came rushing very quickly. يَا قَوْمِ اتَّبِعُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Oh my people! Notice what? يَا قَوْمِ my people! He's trying to relate to them. I'm from amongst you. Ya qawmi tabi'u al-mursaleen. Oh my dear people, make sure you follow these messengers. Ittabi'u man la yas'alukum ajran wa hum muhtadun. Follow those who are not asking you for anything at all. They're not asking you for any kind of payment. And they are guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are a few lessons we can take from this believing man already. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us that this man is coming from the far part of the town? In Aqsa al-Madinah, from far away. Why? This man, the believing man, is coming from a part of the town in which most likely he was amongst the poor. And the rich were living in the better parts of the central parts of this town. And today, of course, depending on the country and city that you're in, sometimes the most uh, wealthy of people will live in the center, in the uh, highest skyscrapers. And sometimes they live far away in the country with their mansions and palaces and their space. This man came from, from a poor background. He's taking a risk. He sees tension, they're about to, this mob is about to attack three messengers of God. So he's saying, follow, follow them, they're guided. He's coming from a far part of the town, taking a risk with his own life. I am from amongst you, my dear people, and I'm asking you to follow them, not because of anything worldly. They're not asking you, and I'm not asking for anything uh, worldly in terms of materialism, payment, or anything like that. The Prophet Muhammad is being reminded as well, that help might come to you from the least expected places. Right? You do your part. You sincerely call people towards the truth. And of course, be wise and strategic about it. But sometimes you'll be in a situation in which, in which you think you're on your own and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you with assistance, with help from sources you don't imagine or expect. When you are brave enough to call people towards the truth, when you're brave enough to speak up in a situation in which many people are afraid or shy or quiet, help will come to you inshallah ta'ala from sources that you don't expect. Now, this person was not from amongst the elite. So what happens? He starts giving them persuasive reasons, similar to the believing man from the, the, the family of Fir'aun. He starts trying to persuade them. And one of the things that he does is he says, how can I not worship the one who formed me, the one who molded me, the one who created me? How can I not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the one that we will return to? Why would I not do that? In other words, he's asking them a question to make them think intellectually and also spiritually. Well, I'll go to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Notice he says about himself. He doesn't even say about you guys. He's not trying to be very aggressive or hostile to a mob of people who are very angry at that time. 
And then he says, Am I going to take besides God? Because they believe in the God, they believe in the Creator, but they also worship idols. Am I going to take God's, basically, idols, partners besides Him? These partners cannot even benefit me. They have no shafa, they have no benefit to me whatsoever. If Allah decided that something was going to happen, something was decreed, they can't do anything for me. If I did that, I would be far from guidance. I would be so misguided. If I worshipped idols, he's saying, I would be misguided. Notice what his approach is very interesting. He says, Inni amantu bi rabbikum fasma'un. I do believe as well in your Lord. Fasma'un, so listen to me. He doesn't say, you are misguided. He doesn't say, stop worshipping idols, that's dumb or that's foolish. He says, if I were to do that, that would be very foolish. If I were to do that, I would be so misguided. How can I do that? I believe in the same Lord as you. So listen to what I'm saying. Ya qawm, ya qawm, ya qawm, my people, my people, my people, listen to what I'm saying. And there are a number of other lessons we take from this. First of all, in terms of his wisdom, the man was in a situation in which there was so much tension, a mob of people ready to kill over what they wanted. And what did he do? Instead of being aggressive and reactive to what they were saying and just going all out and attacking them, he said, you know, wisely, if I were to do that, I would be misguided. And also, I'm not a different person than you. I believe in God, right? I don't believe in the idols, but I believe in your Lord. Fasma'un, so listen to me. You're going to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ilayhi turja'un, you're all going to go back to Him. Now, of course, we take, we take from this the lesson that sometimes in da'wah, you don't attack the opposing ideology. Sometimes, in certain scenarios, like this example right here, again, it was a matter of a mob and they were ready to kill the messengers. Sometimes you have to use a different strategy. The point here is not about what strategy you should use in every situation because it will vary from place to place and time to time, platform to platform, individual to individual. And so use the lessons of the Quran in terms of da'wah, use the etiquette of the Prophet ﷺ, use what you learned from the Sahaba and use what you learned from your teachers about giving da'wah in a very wise, strategic way. Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah. Call to the way of your Lord with wisdom. Call to the way of your Lord with wisdom. Some people don't know how to give da'wah, sadly. And what they'll do is they'll go all out just attacking and insulting everyone and anything. And they think, well, this must apply to everyone because everyone's so sensitive. We have to just say it as it is. And they think that's equivalent to speaking the truth. They don't realize that you can speak the truth, but the way that you say it matters. The approach matters. Your uslu, your style, your approach, all of that, it matters. And you might be more effective. Ultimately, what matters most is that you are impactful, that you are effective. Rather than saying to someone something as inappropriate as, how can you be so dumb to do that? You might say, you know what, if I were to do that, I would feel very misguided. That's a very different approach, subhanAllah. The intent and the objective is the same. Now what happens here? This man believes, he calls his people, tries to protect these three messengers. And the very next thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us is, قِيلَ ادْخُلِ الْجَنَّةِ it was said to him, enter paradise. قَالَ يَا لَيْتَ قَوْمِي يَعْلَمُونَ He said, I wish my people knew. بِمَا غَفَرَ لِي رَبِّي وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave me and made me amongst the honorable, meaning the people of Jannah. What happened? It was a sudden shift in the story. We went from hearing about him defending the three messengers, calling these people to Islam, and then he died. He's told, enter Jannah. And of course, we know what happens in between. What's the tafsir here? The sudden shift is because they ended up killing him. And the scholars say it was a very brutal mob death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not mention that detail. Because the story is also being addressed towards the people of Quraysh. They're being reminded. They're being reminded that they shouldn't worship idols. They shouldn't uh, commit shirk. They shouldn't uh, ignore their messenger. And that there's a punishment for people who did that before to their prophets. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not giving them ideas of what to do to the Muslims. They're not being given ideas of, oh, kill or do this or have that. And right away it goes to, qilat khulil jannah. Right away. And so he's, it's as though we're being told this man died as a shaheed and automatically he was told, enter paradise. Because the shuhada, the martyrs, we know this from authentic ahadith, the martyrs are in the bellies of green birds roaming about jannah until the day of judgment. They're already enjoying paradise before the rest of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all shahada for his sake. Furthermore, when we look at this story and we reflect, we find that these three messengers are in a very difficult, terrible, impending situation, uh, worrying about uh, dying, being killed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent help from a far part of the town. And this man came, a believer, the only believer in that city of three messengers, one believer, 
and the rest are all rejecting. What happens? Because they killed this one man who was a local to them and maybe they felt that there's no consequence, they ended up getting their anger diverted towards this man, channeled towards this man, rather than those three messengers. They were able to continue with their spreading of the message of Islam in other places. Perhaps, and Allah knows best, maybe they converted thousands of other people because of one man. Because one man diverted his, uh, the, the attention of his people away from these three messengers when they were about to attack them, when they were about to uh, hurt them or kill them. And he ended up dying as a shaheed. This is an honor for him. And notice before he was honored, uh, he was forgiven first. So there is forgiveness, seek forgiveness from Allah so that you are amongst the honorable. Seek forgiveness from Allah, be purified so that you can enter Jannah in that state of honor. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Interestingly, and the last point here, this believing man was so sincere to his people. He really cared for them. How do we know? He called his people to Islam, even though they were about to kill him. Ya qawmi, he called them as his own, as his own community. Ya qawmi, my people. When he died, He's still thinking about his people. Ya layta qawmi ya'lamun. I wish my people knew. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says about this man, this was a man who was sincere to his people, dead and alive. When he was alive, he was sincere to them. He begged them, he, he uh, tried to persuade them, and when he died as well. Are we sincere to the people we call to Islam? Do we really feel empathy towards them that we hope that they're guided? Or do some Muslims mistakenly look down on others and don't actually try to call them to Islam? They quickly and immediately start to attack and insult. Maybe that person could be a better Muslim than you one day. Why not call them to Islam? Why not help them be saved? Dead and alive, this man cared about his people. If you want to be successful in da'wah, you have to care about other people being guided. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put empathy and compassion in our hearts and allow us to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in his approach. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide others through us. Allahumma amin.